Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and it is No Effort November, so I'm making a short. Is it? Blah, blah. I'm making a series of short videos that are longer than a short, but shorter than a regular video, where I don't have a script, I don't have theme music, and I don't have any preparation. Let's get started. Today, I'm talking about the print functions in the standard library's FMT package. One of my coaching uh, students recently asked this question. I thought it would make for a great short video. What's the deal with all these print functions? We have printf and printlin and sprintf and sprintf and how do you make sense of all this? Of course, if you come from a C background or, or a language inspired by C, you probably already know the answer to this. But if you come from a language like JavaScript where the print concept or the printf concept is a little bit less common, this could be confusing. So let's break it down. As with many things related to Go, the best place to get your information is from the official documentation. Here I'm looking at the Go doc for the FMT package. So right off the top, we can see that there are three functions, print, printf, and println. Let's break those down first. Print is pretty straightforward. It just prints whatever arguments you have, whatever arguments you pass. It just prints those out to standard output. Uh, I think with a space between them, uh, if there's more than one argument. Println is the next simplest to understand. It does exactly the same thing, except it adds a new line to the end. And then printf, uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the formatting string, but it allows you to format that string using arbitrary formatting. Details are in this document if you want to look that up. Next, let's look at the sprint functions. Now, these functions work practically identically. The difference is that rather than printing the standard output, they return a string. That's what the s at the beginning stands for. So here you have sprint or sprint. It's not about running fast. It's about string printing. It takes whatever arguments you pass, turns them into a string, uh, space separated. Sprintlin or sprintlin or sprintline does the same thing except that it makes the string that's returned in a new line. And then sprintf does exactly the same as printf except rather than going to standard output, it returns a string that is formatted according to your format specification. And then finally, fprintf. F stands for file, although that's kind of a misnomer. I think it's borrowed from C where you would pass it a file handle. Uh, here you can pass it any I.O. writer, which doesn't have to be a file. It could be an in-memory buffer, buffer or anything else. Uh, anything that, that takes a stream of input, basically. But what it means is that we do the exact same rules as we do with print and sprint, except that rather than going to standard output or to a string, it goes to whatever you specify as your I.O. writer, the first argument, W. And now you know where I'm going with this. fprintlin does the exact same thing as printlin and sprintlin, except that it adds a new line at the end. And then finally, fprintf does exactly the same as printf and sprintf, except that it uses the format uh, that you provide. So that's it. We have nine functions. And if you're not familiar with what this uh, naming convention means, it can be confusing. But once you understand the convention, the prefixes and the suffixes, it's pretty straightforward. The prefix nothing uh, is standard, means standard output. The prefix s means string. The prefix f means file or IO writer in the case of the Go program. And then the suffixes are nothing for just standard printing, ln to mean line, it adds a new line, and f to mean it takes a format. And by the way, uh, just as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this question was asked by one of my Go coaching students. Uh, I have some availability now uh, to take on a couple more. If you're interested in uh, some Go coaching, uh, contact me. We can talk about the details. Head over to boldlygo.tech. There's a contact me button there. Send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you about the details. And for now, there should be a box up here floating above beside my head uh, with a link for you to click on for another video. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to sit here awkwardly. <laughs>